Hello, it's Michael Hoke. We'll go over neuroradiology physics. This is the first installment. We're going to cover CAT scan, multiple choice questions just like the boards, some physics questions, some artifacts. Let's get started. Number one, what is the name of the artifact in this patient with suspected stroke depicted by the arrow? The axial image in the yellow box corresponds with the slice in the coronal image. This is bread and butter partial volume artifact. You can see that the slice goes through the sulcus and the gyrus and the CAT scan. Axial image kind of gets a mixture of the two partial volume imaging artifact. Question number two, what is the name of this artifact in the patient with a change in mental status? Well, it's another easy one. This is patient motion artifact. The CAT scan is blurred and ghosted and uh, the patient was moving around a lot. Another bread and butter easy case. What is the name of this CT artifact for case number three? This streak artifact. Uh, so this was a patient that had onyx embolization of an AVM and the onyx materials Hounds field units is so high on the lookup table for the CAT scan that the CAT scan doesn't know what to do with that density and creates a bunch of streak artifacts. All right, number four. Not an artifact, more of a physics question. In CT dose evaluation, the CT dose index volume times scan length equals the DLP, the dose length product. The slice by multiplied by scan length is going to give you the dose length product. Part two of this question, take it a step further, the dose length product times the K factor gives you what? Well, the effective dose. K factor, the weighting factor specific for whatever organ you're imaging, times the dose length product will give you your effective dose, and that's measured in uh, millisieverts, and the DLP is measured in milligram per centimeter. All right, more artifacts. This is another two part question. They like those two-part questions on the board, so I put some in here. Number five, what is the name of the CT artifact depicted by the arrow? Well, there's a hyperdense lesion in that right frontal sinus, and it's causing beam hardening artifact. All right, part two, what is the most likely diagnosis of this right frontal sinus lesion that causes the beam hardening artifact? Osteoma. Uh, you can tell it's an osteoma by the pearly white high density in the lesion. Fibrous dysplasia, be more ground glass within the bone, ossifying fibroma, kind of like a lamellar calcification pattern, and chondrosarcoma has the ring and arc matrix. All right, number six. In CT, prepatient collimators are designed to do all the following except, I like those except questions, reduce scatter. Um, a, B, and C are all the jobs of the prepatient collimator. So it shapes the beam from the x-ray tube, it determines your slice thickness, and it tries to minimize your penumbra. Penumbra is the portion of the x-ray beam that hits the patient but does not make it to the detector, so it's excess dose to the patient. You're wasting that beam. It's not going to make it to the image. And you got to remember that the post-patient collimators are also called the pre-detector collimators, and those are the ones that reduce the scatter. All right, number seven, part one. What is the name of the CT artifact? Ring artifact. It's a bunch of concentric rings. And then what generation CT scanner does ring artifact come from? It's a third generation scanner. To correct this, you've got to call in your vendor uh, technician to come in and replace the detector. All right, moving along. Part eight, another physics question. Not so much an artifact question. In CT, this formula, table travel per rotation, um, per x-ray beam width equals the pitch wind up in the pitch part two increasing the pitch greater than one will reduce the dose to the patient and increase noise artifacts uh, this is true so you're going to increase the space between your acquisition scanning and it'll reduce the dose but it'll give you a worse image with more noise Number nine, what is the cause of this artifact? Well, we've seen this artifact already with the osteoma case, this beam hardening artifact. So what's the cause of that? Uh, we're getting rid or attenuating all our low energy photons. And then the ones that are left um, are the high energy photons and they go right through the uh, image and you get this artifact. All right, number 10, which myelogram image was created with a high pass filter, A or B? 
same patient. Uh, a. So A is the uh, high-pass filter for bone algorithm. You can see that the uh, vertebral bodies have a more well-defined sharp border. It's higher resolution image with more noise. And then B is the low pass or soft tissue where the contrast is better, but the resolution is not and has less noise. All right, number 11 in CT, this formula, one third the center of the CT dose index plus two thirds of the surface CT DI. Um, what gives you what? Well, it's the weighted average because most of the energy is deposited into the surface of the phantom or the patient. So the surface is more weighted than the center. All right, I think this is the last question here. Part, another two-part question. So part one, the patient recently underwent IR thrombectomy for stroke. The post-procedure dual energy CT shows what diagnosis depicted by the arrow down there in the uh, posterior left MCA territory. Well, this is contrast staining. So on the lower energy scan of the same patient here, uh, the 100 keV scan on the left has higher attenuation and that's because iodine's K edge is lower and closer to 100 keV. So it looks brighter on the lower energy scan. So that's contrast staining. Part two, what is the K edge of iodine? Uh, I just gotta memorize this one, it's 33. Four is uh, calcium, 37 is barium, and 50 is gadolinium. But remember, K edge of iodine, 33. All right, that's the end. I'll make part two to cover MRI shortly, and good luck on the boards.